Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. And I'm super excited to be with you guys today. It has been a heck of two, a heck of a two weeks uh, time period. Lots and lots and lots of amazing things happening. Um, lots of breakthroughs and just awesome things to witness and see. The prophetic workshop was just like I thought it would be. I thought he would just show up. I had super high expectations of him. And won't you know that he met every single one and then some. Um, I really was praying all last week uh, that he would give each woman a word because I feel like that's what he wanted me to ask him to do. Um, I think he wants us to pray like he directs us. So prayer isn't so much about what we desire, but it's about figuring out through talking with him what he wants to unleash and then coming together over that and just being excited and expected in this amazing place. And so I knew for sure he was going to meet with each woman individually and give her at least one word. Um, but the testimonies that are coming out of what happened um, was just him. It's who he is. He just can't help but be radical and awesome and loving and gracious and kind and just continuing to reveal himself to people. And I love that I know him and that I serve him. Like it is the gift of my life to, to be with the gift giver. We talked about the prophetic gift, but gifts are never to be elevated to a position of worship. They're never to be um, desired more than God. He's the giver of those gifts. So we want to be with the gift giver. And out of that relationship with him, we can move in the spiritual gifts, but definitely not apart from it. And that's when you'll see that it's done wrong. And so it always comes back to relationship with him. And out of that intimacy and that direct knowledge of his heart and his plans, then the prophetic gift can come out of it. And so what swirled around the first teaching that I did um, for the workshop was identity. And, and then it just continued to trickle through um, early last week, all the way into this week, even to today, I was talking with a precious um, friend of mine and it's all coming back to identity. And it, that isn't, that is, that shouldn't be foreign. It, it is about identity. It's about who he has made us to be through the blood of Jesus. It's who the father has made us to be through the blood of Jesus. He has made us to be his sons and daughters. And that is our standing. Ephesians 2 tells us that we're seated with Christ in the heavenlies. So like our position is in Jesus and then in turn, we have Holy Spirit in us and we're interwoven together. And the truth about who we are has to not be disputed anymore. We cannot continue walking around in doubt of who we really are. And it's not that we did it. All we did was accept it. It's what he did. It's what Jesus did for us that brings us into this relationship, this close, intimate relationship with the living God. And out of that, we get to participate in his kingdom, in his being here, in humanity, in his coming in as um, our, through our hands and feet and our mouths. Such an important role, but we cannot hold that without identity. And so I want to touch on identity as a teaching just for a few minutes today. So one of the core things after Jesus is baptized, um, and I know that this, is, this isn't this is new news, so I'm really just recapping the Bible, but when he was baptized, it said the Spirit led him away. I think this is Matthew 4. Hold on, let me check because I don't want to steer you wrong. Um, yeah, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. It says that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. Interesting. So Jesus was under direction. He was baptized. And in that baptism, we see the Father saying, this is my child. He's mine. And I'm so pleased with him. That's how he sees us. This is my daughter. This is my son. And I am so pleased. Now, how can God be pleased with us? Well, because we're in Jesus. This is our right standing. He did all the work. We just get to enjoy it. How, how lavish is this love? We just get to hang out 
and enjoy the relationship that was bought by Jesus's blood. That is the changing piece. It was just given to us. And now we just get to revel in it and enjoy it. This intimacy with the living God. And so after this definite sign of identity, he's mine, the father says. He's mine. Holy Spirit comes down like a dove and just rests on him. He's immediately led away by Holy Spirit into the, into the desert, into the wilderness to be tempted. So after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, then the enemy comes. And what is the consistency of all the temptations and attacks? Identity. If you are the son of God, if you are, and we stop him right there. So when he comes at you and says, well, if you are, then wouldn't you look different? If you are, then why do you still struggle that way? If you are, then why aren't you doing this? Or if you are, you should be doing even more. Let me tell you, God doesn't need you to work. He desires to partner with you to bring about his kingdom business, but he doesn't need you. He doesn't. He wants to work with you. He desires that partnership. But the minute you feel like you have to do something in order to bring that about, is the minute you're putting way too much on what your work is and not on what Jesus already did. Jesus did the work. We get to release what he has given us to release. So there's a difference, but the pressure is not to be on us. And this is where identity comes from. I'm fully pleasing to God because I accepted the free gift of salvation. In that moment, I became the righteousness of Christ. And from then on, I don't have to work to please God. I just please God because I am who I am. I am who he says that I am. And a daughter under the blood of Jesus is fully pleasing to her father, period. And so I don't have to work for this anymore, but I like to participate. And I think I said it this morning to a friend, like Jesus did all the work. I just get to hang out and do really cool things like teach and worship and pray mountains down like level them I get to do all of those things while just hanging out in my identity in who he is and who he says that I am it's so cool and it's so freeing remember Jesus's yoke is light like he's not putting something heavy on us he just wants to walk along beside us and just whisper into our ears go ahead and release this this is where I want to move next go ahead and do that and it's awesome and it's amazing. And so Jesus refutes the enemy right away with the word. And that's why the word is so important. It is our sword. And um, in as far as the, the armor of God, so word in that, um, when you pick up the sword, the word there is rima, which is different than logos. And so um, logos is like the word, the word, like Bible, like Jesus. But Rima is a revealed word. It's an inspired word in the moment that Holy Spirit will give you. And it might very well be scripture, but it might very well just be him telling you some truth. And that's what you use in those moments against the enemy. And so Jesus, like the attack is if you are. He doesn't fall for it. But let me tell you guys, every time we fall for it, we become ineffective against the kingdom of darkness. When we fall for things that don't line up with our true identity in Christ now, we give the enemy authority and power over us in those situations. That's why identity is so important. He will eat you alive, chew you up and spit you out if you do not know who you are in Christ. Because he can. Because that's the thing that stops him. He's already a defeated foe. But if you're not standing sure in that and in your security in Christ that I am a daughter of the most high God because of what Jesus did for me. If you're not standing in that, you're toast period. And that might make you feel really uncomfortable, but that's why identity is so important. When we were getting ready to engage in this massive spiritual warfare thing that started last June in our house, well, it started before that, but we woke up to it like, wait a minute, something is going on here bigger than we think. The first thing my daughter Shelby to me said was, is all I know is the Bible is clear that the enemy will get you if you are not sure in your identity. That's what he tried to do to Jesus. And that's what he will try to do to us constantly is to get us to doubt God's goodness for us and God's goodness to us. 
And that really we are totally redeemed and completely forgiven. And there's no bondage for us. There's no chains for us. There's no guilt and shame. Everything at that moment of salvation was taken off of us. Period. It was broken because Jesus said it was finished. All that remains on us is what we continue to put on. We're the ones that tie us down. And when we're tied down and we're not aware of how free we really can be, we are ineffective against the enemy and the kingdom of darkness. And that's a tough place to be if he's coming after you. So you better believe standing firm in your identity is the key here because the work's already been done by Jesus. But do you stand on that work? Do you know it with every breath that you take that you are fully pleasing already to God Almighty because of what Jesus did? It's done. Now act like it and walk like it through the power of Holy Spirit. Rise up into that identity. Rise up into the likeness of Christ as Holy Spirit cleans you out and equips you and sets you into a position of understanding that with God, nothing is impossible. If I bring him a mess, he will change it into something else. He will give me beauty for ashes every single time. Morning may last for a short time through the night, but then joy comes in the morning. Like, so I might cry for a time, but that's not going to be a forever thing. We can face the hard stuff of our life knowing that we are already accepted. We have nothing to prove. And this is something that's been so huge for me in getting rid of people pleasing and fear of man. I have nothing to prove. Nothing. All I need to do is sit with my father and love on him and have him love on me and work and operate out of that reality because that is my reality and I just need to perceive it. And then I'm standing in my identity. And so it's super, super important. I'm just going to check. We're already at 12 minutes, so I'm going to let you guys go, but I want to make sure so your permission in Christ is what gives you the invitation and permission to approach the throne of grace with boldness. Remember, we're to approach the throne with boldness. Where does that come from? Well, because we're no longer us. We're Christ. He has covered us with his righteousness. And so we're able to do that. The minute we forget that, we're very vulnerable. Or, you know, maybe we don't even have a target on our back at that point because we're not a threat to the kingdom anyway, the kingdom of darkness. We can't do anything if we're not standing. We can't do anything against the enemy if we're not standing in Jesus. Because Jesus defeated him. But if we're not standing in that victory, what can we do? We're harmless. And I don't want to be harmless. I plan on making a tremendous amount of damage against the kingdom of darkness. He will regret, Satan will regret the day that he ever pointed a sword at me and my family. Because what is going to happen here, and I'm testifying again, is that the testimonies that come out of this are going to radically set people free through the power of Jesus for decades to come, period. So we're going to do a lot of damage because we're going to know who we are and we're going to stand in that. And it's going to be awesome. And it is awesome because I'm already doing it and it's great. And so I want to talk, to, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about identity today because it is at the root of everything. And if your identity isn't flushed out, you will not be effective in ministry. You'll run yourself ragged. And I know because I did it. And then three years ago, the Lord stripped me of everything and was like, okay, girl, it's time to get it right this time. Because you have a call in your life, but you have no foundation for this call. And so then we started building identity. So be blessed. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. You are who he says you are. And don't let anyone or anything tell you differently. Much love and peace. See you next time. Bye.